know that I am the ultimate Mugler fanboy. Sometimes I like to joke that I don't actually have blood running through my veins, it's angel, pure angel, uh, which would be quite horrendous if I was in an accident, I guess, for the people around me. Anyway, I love Mugler because they are bold and daring. Everything they've done has been a challenge. They, make, they create conflict with their fragrances. They make fragrances that people aren't going to like. They're either going to love them or they're going to hate them. So they always go for that divisive statement that makes for a really bold fragrance. Moving on to their first fragrance in 1992, uh, that was Angel, uh, which has been one of the best-selling fragrances in the world ever since. Um, it started off actually with a really slow distribution, um, and it wasn't a popular scent for a couple of years because it was so divisive and people thought that it smelled horrendous with its kind of patchouli chocolate vibe. Um, so it, it took a while to really sort of bed in. They didn't then launch another sort of pillar fragrance until 2005 when they followed with Alien. Alien was arguably a little bit easier to get on with than, than Angel was, but at the same time it really used a unique overdose um, in the same way that Angel did with its patchouli, uh, used an overdose of cashmeran, which is a sort of a woody material that smells uh, quite fuzzy, gauzy and almost sharp with a, a blonde wood vibe against the backdrop of like huge syrupy jasmine. Um, so Alien was as bold as, as, as Angel, if not as challenging. Um, and then in 2009, um, Moogler launched Womanity, um, which was the weirdest fragrance I think they've ever made. It had caviar in it, which doesn't sound that pleasant, uh, but actually was really fascinating. It had fig uh, and fig woods in it. Um, and that smelled kind of like really fresh, juicy, but also with this salty marine vibe and an odd biscuity yeasty base. Um, I think Womanity was a bit too daring. I think the concept with the name and the bottle and the really out there fragrance, which was so, so radiant, yet so, so fresh and easy to wear, was a bit too odd for people um, and didn't really gel. So I think Womanity is unfortunately not managed to stay within the collection. So in that time, so from two, 1992 to 2009, there were only three, three Moogler fragrances. Uh, but now that's all about to change because last week in the UK and France, Moogler launched Aura. Look at that pretty bottle. So Aura has just launched. Um, it was created by a team of four perfumers, uh, Jean-Christophe Harreau, uh, Daphne Bouget, uh, Amandine Marie and Marie Salman. Um, they have created Something really quite surprising for Moogler, which I will get to when we smell it in a few moments time. But first of all, I want to tell you about Aura. What is it? What's the concept behind it? Why is it in this rather fetching green heart, etc. So for Aura, uh, Moogler wanted to go with the concept of botanical meets animal. So the idea is that you've got something um, very innate uh, to the, the human experience and the wildness of being human and the fact that we are all just animals uh, in clothing um, and also celebrating the botanical aspect of it. So I describe the whole concept as a very sort of Mugler meets Avatar. If you've watched the film online um, for the, the ad campaign, it's very sort of Pandora but green, not blue, because obviously we don't want copyright infringement. It's a green fragrance on the jungle side of the spectrum, um, which makes it something really rather unusual. So the notes are rhubarb leaf, which is an overdose that they've used, orange blossom. Uh, they've also got a material in there called Tyveliana, which is a name they've given to a feminish material that they're using, so other people don't steal it, uh, which is also used in overdose within the composition. Uh, we also have um, vanilla bourbon and another feminish material called wolfwood. So let's take a sniff. So the first thing you notice about Aura is it's quite sweet. It's not gourmand sweet, but it's like sappy sweet. So it's really juicy um, and it's really refreshing, but it also has this unusual stickiness to it initially, which does make you think of kind of humid, humid places. It's definitely green, but for me, I, I get more of the jungle green. So I think of really sort of big juicy palm leaves filled with water. It's kind of, it's that sort of vibe. Um, it's not overtly sweet. I think it's more dewy and fresh than sort of sugary, um, but it's certainly got an element of sweetness to it. As it dries down, it does become heavier. So there is the kind of a, a more uh, unusual smokiness that appears, which is sort of the, 
Clash of the Wolf Wood, which is a really kind of smoky wood material, and the Tigaliana, which has a sugared almond vibe to it. Um, the orange mushroom I can't really smell, but as um, as aura dries down, it certainly gets more complex. Um, there's a really lovely touch in terms of the smokiness against the vanilla, which creates a, a kind of hint of the gourmand vibe that Mugler have sort of used throughout their fragrances. Um, I really like it. I think it's it's going to be a surprise for people, whether that's good or bad. I don't know. I think another thing people will probably notice about Aura is that it's not very loud. So we used to Mugler fragrances almost being a smack in the face when you spray them because they are so loud, they're so bold, they're so um, offensive in a way, which is what I kind of like about them, is that you know if you put 10 sprays of Angel on, you're likely to be arrested. Um, this is much softer, so it's definitely present, and you're not going to be sat there thinking, well, I'm disappointed, I, don't, I can't smell it. You can certainly smell it, but it's much more subdued. So you're going to find something that's a little bit more intimate here from Mugler, which is a surprise, and I think that's actually quite a fascinating thing for them to do, and also, Good for them to have something in their collection that doesn't necessarily want to cause you grievous bodily harm. I'm all for that. Um, one thing that I did think was really funny about Aura is actually the, the obviously the concept is uh, botanical meets animal, but also uh, Moogle are having a couple of their sort of press things talked about the divine bestiality um, of Aura, which I'm really hoping is a thing that's got lost in translation, because that means something quite different. Okay, let's talk bottle. Uh, really important. Um, some people say bottles don't matter. I think they do. I mean, you're buying a bottle of fragrance. Yes, it's got to smell good, but also at the same time, you're going to want to have something that's pretty and looks nice. So Aura certainly, and I'll see if I can get this up close for you, um, certainly hits uh, the mark in terms of the bottle. It's kind of sort of half kryptonite, half emerald city, half sort of snake heart. I really love that, like, I don't know if you can see, but I really love the kind of, the the faceting on the heart is almost like scales of some sort of lizard. I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, it looks absolutely stunning. This is the 30 mil size. The bigger the size, the better it looks, I think. Uh, there's a 90 mil size, which is really quite chunky, which looks, looks really beautiful. So Moogler are famous for their bottles. Obviously Angel was a star. Alien was an amethyst, and Womanity was a, well, totem pole? I don't really know what Womanity was, but it had a face on it, and I thought that was cool. Um, Aura is a heart, a green, beautiful heart, and it looks just exactly as you imagine the fragrance to smell, I guess. Um, as always, it's refillable, so they've got that Eco Lux thing going on, they've got that down to a T, so you can keep your Aura forever and ever and just keep refilling it. And if you're cool like me, you can get it engraved and have the word candy written on it because why not? So what do I think of Aura? Is it a hit or a miss? Well, for me, I'm gonna come out and say it's not my favorite movie there. Um, I'm a diehard Angel fan, as I may have mentioned about 23 times during this video. I love Alien, I even love Humanity, I love all the flankers, etc. Aura is probably not the one that's gonna set my heart on fire, but I have been wearing a lot of it. It's great in the heat because it's got that lovely refreshing stickiness that feels great in humidity. Um, I like it, I think it's really complex, and I think it's one of those, it's it's a thinking man's fragrance. If you spray it on and you, you, you enjoy it, you'll start to really notice these nuances and this multifaceted nature that makes it really interesting. It is not a punch in the face like Alien, it's not a punch in the face like Angel, it's not going to have that same love it or hate it um, reaction that the others do. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I do think some people are probably going to sit here and say, well, it's not a move there, it's not bold enough, I'm disappointed. And that's fair enough if you feel that way. But I think you really need to try Aura for a period of time to get it. So don't just spray it on and be like, oh, okay, well, it just smells a bit sweet and I don't really think it's that different. I think you'll notice that it's actually quite unusual the more you wear it. So that was my review of Aura, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos from me, then just hit subscribe. Somewhere down here, there, there, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere. There'll be a button that says subscribe, press it. Um, you can also visit my blog, uh, which is thecandyperfectboy.com. And if you want to hear me on my podcast, which I run with the fabulous Mick Gilbert from the Love to Smell YouTube channel, uh, then that's available on iTunes and it's called Fume Chat. I'll see you soon.